Facilities layout. What is a layout? A layout is the configuration of departments, work centers, and equipment with particular emphasis on movement of work, including customers or material, throughout the system. Facilities layout decision usually arises when we want to design new facilities or we want to redesign an existing facility. The need for layout planning. There are several different reasons for layout planning. Among those are inefficient operations that are going to cost a lot and also maybe they be a bottleneck. For example, the MSE, MSP International Airport, the Minneapolis St. Paul Airport, that they needed to do a redesign the facility that they already had because of the high cost and also the bottleneck operation that was due to inefficiency of uh, they already have the layout that they already have and that was such that if you wanted to take a plane uh, even if you had a connection at MSB and you didn't want to actually exit uh, the airport you had to go through the security no matter what so Imagine a, a passenger that has already been um, past the security gate um, previous to landing in MS, MSB and he's just taking um, the next flight there and he's not going to get out of the security zone. But the planning, the layout actually was inefficient and they had to do it. No matter whether they left the area or not, they had to go through the security again. So this means that a lot of redundant operations, which is costly and also bottlenecks, is going to cause um, um, long lanes and waiting lines uh, for in the, in the airport. So that was that's an example of a reason for uh, layout planning or redesign of a layout. Another example or reason for layout planning or redesigning is the accidents or safety hazards. If uh, the facility that you already have um, is causing accidents or safety hazards, that means that it's inefficient and it's not safe, so it needs to uh, redesign the layout planning for that. Another needs or reason to do that, the layout planning is changes in product or service design. So there might be a change in product or service that you design or you provide, the service you provide, that would cause uh, the, the layout to be needed to be changed. The, the current layout that you have for your facility is not efficient, it's not suitable with the new product or new service. So it requires an, a change in planning the layout. Another reason is the introduction of new product or service. So it's not just the changes in product or services. There might, there might be a new product or new service that might not be suitable with the current facility that would require a redesign or a planning of the layout. Another reason is changing in uh, output volume or product mix. So uh, the, the might, you, you might actually want, for example, to increase the capacity and the output of the facility. And with the current layout, there's a bottleneck, there's, there, there needs to be a change. Or it could be changes to the methods or equipment in the facility that uh, it needs to address by replanning the layout or redesigning the layout. Or it could be changing to environmental or um, other legal requirements that would require redesigning or replanning of the facility layout that you have currently. The layout design objective. The basic objective for facility layout or the layout of the facility is to facilitate its smooth flow of work, material, and information throughout the system. Other objective, the supporting objectives for uh, the layout of facility is to facilitate product or service quality, to improve the quality of product or service that they provide. 
they, to use the workers and space efficiently, to avoid bottlenecks, to minimize material handling costs, to eliminate unnecessary movement of workers or materials throughout the system, and to minimize production time or customer service time, and lastly, to for design for safety, to improve safety or to guarantee a level of safety. To represent and demonstrate different types of processes in different types of facility layouts, we use diagrams. Uh, here we're going to see what these, how these diagrams work. Uh, the activities are shown by in these diagrams are shown by rectangle. Uh, that's the processes that would add value um, to the product or service and have a capacity. And to show the flow in the system, we use uh, the arrows. So we use two types of arrows. We use the solid arrows and the dashed arrows. The solid arrows are to indicate the hard flow, what is known as hard flow, which is the flow of materials, products, or services. The dash flows are uh, used to indicate the what is called as soft flow, which is the um, flow of information and transactions. And the buffers or the inventories are shown by a rectangle, such as a supplies, work in progress, or WIP, or the finished products are shown by a rectangle. So using these different parts of a diagram that you see here, we can actually demonstrate and represent different process types and facilities. We learned about different types of processes. Now it's time to talk about different types of layouts, facility layouts. The basic layout types for facilities, there are four, um, which we should say there are three because four is just the combination as we're gonna see. The first uh, types of layouts is the product layouts. That's the emphasis on the production, on the product. The product layout is used to achieve a smooth and a rapid flow of large volumes of products. Uh, an example of these are the production lines or assembly lines or U-shaped layouts as we're going to see example of those. The next type of facility layouts is based on and emphasized on the process. So they are called process layouts, which are designed to process items or provide services that involve a variety of processing requirements. Examples of these are job shop or bad shop. The third facility layout type is fixed position layout and as the name suggested is that means that the position is fixed so the item being worked on remain stationary the, the item doesn't work um, to due to different reasons for example it's too heavy it's too big and bulk or it's uh, just stationary it cannot move so the item being worked on remains a station it doesn't move and workers and materials would have to and also equipment would have to move around as they are needed so this is different from the other two which is the product and process layout um, so in 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 that lay, those layouts uh, the product or the processes move and the workers for example the equipment actually stay there uh, for example in assembly line a product is going to work on different processes and it's going to move to the next station, next station, next station. So the workers would remain stationary. But in the fixed position layout, the product stays stationary and the workers and materials and equipments have to move around. And the fourth type of layout is not really a different types of layout, it's just a combination of these layouts, other layouts that we have learned. Let's take a look at the product layouts. Here, the repetitive processing or the assembly line. The product layout is a layout that uses a standardized processing operations to achieve a smooth, rapid, 
and high volume flow. As you see in this picture here, at station one, the process begins. So raw materials or customers coming to this station and the process begins. And after a process is completed, the product, the working process progress is going to send to the second station. And it's going to be processed on the second station, which maybe new materials going to be add on and also maybe laborers is going working on new equipments or handling at the station two and after the process is done uh, the working progress or the product is going to be sent to the second to the third station so the workflow as you see here is from left to right until it reaches the last station which work is finished and the product the finished product is done so this is a standard processing operation that means that whatever is done on a station one is going to be repeated for the next product the next product the next product time so as the station two station three and a station end in the last station um, and because it's repeated that's why it's called repetitive processing and um, at the bottom you can see the cafeteria line which is for serving. So for example, the first station is where the customer get the tray and the silver is silver. The next station after they, they are done with that, they're gonna go to get desserts, the desserts. And after that, they're gonna get, for example, salad or main course, and then potato and vegetables, for example. And after that, maybe breads and rolls and one to the last station or last station in this process is beverage and after that they're going to go to the cashier and pay for their food so again this is a repetitive process every customer have to go to all these they may escape escape one of these for example if they don't want salad they're going to go skip this or if they don't want one for example potato and vegetables they're going to go to the next and so on and so forth so this is a repetitive process which is product layout so it's based on the product. Uh, next, we're going to also learn about the process layout. The pros and cons of the product layout. The pros are high rate of outputs for the product layouts. Uh, the low unit cost, the cost per unit is low because of the layout, how layout has been um, designed and the repeated processing. Labor specialization, so each labor that it works as each unit, it's specialized to do that work, the processes at that special unit. So labor specialization. Low material handling cost per unit because every product is going to move from one station to a station. It's the, the process is standardized, so there's not a lot of unnecessary and redundant uh, move. And also high utilization of labor and equipment establish routing and scheduling so scheduling and routing for this is going to be um, easier comparatively and also routine accounting purchasing and inventory control which makes it easier to manage these types of layout on the other hand the cons of the product layouts are as follows first it creates dull and repetitive jobs those workers and laborers who work at different stations although they get specialize in whatever they do at that station but it's going to be repetitive the job is going to be repetitive and dull which is going to probably cause psychological effect they may not like their job it becomes dull and it's, you know it can uh, reduce their overall uh, efficiency and satisfaction also, poorly skilled workers may not maintain equipment or quality of output um, and fairly inflexibility to the changes in volume of product or process design. So if a product needs to be redesigned or a process needs to be redesigned, the product layout is fairly inflexible to those changes. Uh, also, another one is the highly susceptible to shutdowns. So remember that the repetitive process, the product layout is going to be 
um, from one station to the next to the next to the next. So if one of those stations in the middle, which will be necessary, is if, if the machine is going to shut down or uh, is broken or the labor is going to, for example, um, quit or cannot work for any reason, go to a strike, for example, go on a strike, for example, then the whole system is going to be shut down. So it's really highly susceptible to shutdowns. Uh, next is the preventive maintenance. Uh, that's the capacity for quick and repair and spare parts. So um, you need to have preventive maintenance to avoid the um, shutdowns. Um, so you, you need to make sure that every processes, every equipment, even laborers are fine in advance for each station so that you wouldn't have to have a total and complete shutdown. And later, la the last one is that individual incentive plans are impractical uh, or it's because of the bottleneck problem. Because every station, as you see, even if you improve the output and efficiency and productivity of one station, it's not going to improve the efficiency of the overall system because how the product layout is designed. Um, so, for example, suppose that we have three stations here. And each of these, they have their own processing time and productivity. So if you, for example, increase the productivity of one of these stations, for example, these stations twice through incentive to the labor or to improving the equipment. Um, so if you, if this process is uh, improved, its productivity, it's not going to change the overall productivity because What's going to happen is this is going to um, produce or um, complete or finish the product um, half the time that it used to. So this means that it's going to send it to this process, the next process. But this process has the same output, uh, the same productivity. So um, what happens is you're going to have um, idle times here in these machines because this machine also uh, hasn't changed the productivity so the output is going to be the same so what's going to happen is this machine is going to be productive more productive so it's going to have to work half time and being ideal the other half so this means that overall the productivity of the system does not change so that's why that's one of the uh, cons of the product layout is that the individual incentives or Improving the productivity of one stage does not change uh, the productivity or improve the productivity of the whole system. Another version of the um, assembly line or the repetitive processing, which, were, which as we saw was just a line from left to right, um, is what is called as U-shaped. Uh, especially this is because if you consider a facility that uh, they, they um, have limited a space for a long line. So what you can do is you can actually bend the line. As you see here, the line is bent here. Instead of going forward, it just bend and go back to the left. So um, you're going to save some space uh, horizontally. Um, so this is a U-shaped production line. Now let's study the next layout, the process layout, which is the non-repetitive processing. Process layout unlock the repetitive process, which is in the product layout, can actually handle a variety of different processing requirements. So in process layout, the processors and the, 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 the different stations or tasks are actually categorized and focused on based on the processes that they can do. So for example, you can actually have different department that they do different tasks and different processes here as shown in this graph on the left. So you can have department A, department B, department C, department D, E and F and so on and so forth. So each of these department, they process different, they, they actually have different processes and they, you know, do different tasks, accomplish different tasks. So when a product comes in based on its requirement, its process requirement, it can actually move from one department to the other 
and for a different product that has different routes and different process requirements and actually go to different departments so two different products can actually be processed in this process layout as you can see on the right picture it shows the process route for three different products the blue product the green product and the red product so three different products can actually be uh, processed in the process layout uh, based on the requirements. So for example, all of these, uh, all of these products, three different products uh, are received at the receiving and shipping area. And based on the requirement, they're gonna go to different processes and different departments. Uh, but all of them can actually uh, be processed in this system, unlike the uh, product layout, which is more standardized and doesn't have flexibility in a variety of different products because every process, every product has to go to a stage to a stage. So all of the products actually have the same and similar um, route. So the process layout gives a flexibility uh, in, in process requirements for the for different products. Uh, an example of the non-repeated processing or process, process layout is job shop and batch for the non-repetitive processing. The pros and cons of process layouts. First, let's just start with the pros. Process layout can handle a variety of processing requirement as we noticed. Also, the process layout is not particularly vulnerable to equipment failure as much as at, at the extent as which the product uh, layout is because as you see um, in, in the description, the pro process layout is uh, laid out based on the different processes. So if for example, one department uh, and equipment in one department is shut down, it's only going to affect those um, products that need to go to that department. So there are other products that they may not actually need that department need, do not need those equipment and processes. So um, this means that when a department or when an equipment is um, broken or shut down, that does not necessarily mean that the whole system is shut down, unlike the product layout. Also, uh, the general purpose equipment um, usually is often less costly and easier to maintain compared to the specific purpose, uh, purpose equipment that we um, see in the product layout. And um, lastly, it is possible to use individual incentive systems in process layout, unlike the product layout, because imagine that you increase the productivity of a um, department or a process or an incentive to a labor that works on a department. So that means that the, the productivity of a department is increases. So this means that uh, unlike the product layout, this can actually increase the productivity of, productivity of the whole system because those products that go to that department, they're going to be um, more, more efficient processes. Um, the cons of process layouts um, are as follows. In, in process inventories can be high because uh, in the uh, process layout, different products may actually, the different product that they have different routes, process routes, may actually need to go to the same department. Um, so when they are finished, they, they might be actually, um, the next department that they need to go through may be actually busy. So they have to um, put in a buffer or in an in-process inventory. So to wait for the next department and next process to be available. So this causes the in-process inventory to becomes higher. The routing and the scheduling uh, for the process layout compared to the product layout is more challenging uh, of a task and it's not easy. Um, and also equipment utilization are lower compared to the product layout, that of product layout. Also material handling is a slow and inefficient compared to the product layout. Uh, also, lastly, a special attention is necessary for each product or customer because they have different, um, they, they are different from each other. They, they need different requirements, different process requirements, different routes. 
So it's not a standardized process uh, as the uh, product layout. So it needs a special attention. A third type of layout, facility layout, is the fixed position layout. Uh, this is the layout in which the product or the project remains stationary, doesn't move, maybe cannot move, and workers, materials, and equipment have to actually move and come to the station product or project to work on it. So the fixed position layout um, is suitable, for example, for those projects and products that cannot be moved or they are too large. Uh, to move or too difficult to move, for example, um, the uh, large construction projects such as buildings, power plants, dams, um, shipbuilding, and uh, production of large aircraft, and also space mission rockets that you can't really, it's really difficult to move them, they are too large, too bulky. Or maybe actually you cannot really move them. How do you want to move a dam? You cannot move a dam, right? Or a large building. So those remains a station and fixed. And then the labors and the equipments come to these stationary and fixed position layout. The other type of layout is combination layout, which is not necessarily a different type of layout. It's just a combination as the name suggests. So some operational environments uh, use a combination of the three basic layouts that we learned. Um, so for example, supermarkets, they can use a combination of uh, the um, a product layout and process layout. Also shipyards may actually use a combination of the different layouts. Um, also some organization are actually are moving a bit from the process layouts in an effort to uh, make benefit of the product layouts for its efficiency and for its utilization, high utilization, such as in cellular manufacturing, flexible manufacturing system, group technology by combining and standardizing the processes. Um, they can move actually from going to from the process layout, which is although um, flexible and um, it can handle different variety of products, but if you, you can actually standardize this process, you may be able to transform into a combination of process layout and product layout. So having the product layout, part of that product layout could actually increase the efficiency and utilization in your system. Let's now see how service layouts are different. Service layouts can be similarly categorized into product-based, um, process-based or fixed position layouts. Uh, service layout requirements are somewhat different due to factors such as degree of customer contact, which is different from product and manufacturing, and also degree of customization, which is also higher uh, in service layout compared to the standardized product layout or product-based uh, manufacturing. Uh, common service layouts we can see examples such as warehouse and storage layouts, the retail layouts and in, in the retail stores and also in office layouts. So, for example, part of the, uh, the service layouts is that because it deals with customers and people, so um, the requirement is different. For example, um, making it uh, more... Uh, friendly or customer friendly or um, aesthetic and, and beautiful and um, uh, for example the, the temperature would matter here it has to be a temperature that uh, customers would want so th this is going to be totally based on people and how people would actually what people want and how people would um, uh, expect from an organization to serve them. So the requirement for service layouts and, and the characteristic of service layouts has to also uh, according to the customer and people uh, expectation have to adopt.